This is an introduction to design of experiments, specifically factorial designs in a particular design called to the K factorial designs. Now, why would you do this? Well, normally you're interested in some sort of response variable, we'll call it Y, and you have a number of factors that might influence that variable. So you want to know which of the factors are important and are there interactions between the factors. So essentially what you're doing is screening the important factors. So uh, this requires an understanding of the system because you need to create a list of the potential factors and determine the levels of variation for each of the factors. Now note that equal numbers of uh, levels it, it facilitates the design. So that's why you'd do it, in order to screen the factors. Now what would you do? You'd take the factors and you'd create levels of each of the factors, um, like a low level and a high level, and then you have replication. Replication is done so that you can get a sense of the variation in the measurement. And note that the number of runs that you do is tied to the number of levels, the number of factors, and the number of replicates that you have in your experiment. Notice that this way of running the experiment is different than what you might intuitively design. Intuitively, you might think it's best to vary one factor at a time, like holding x2 constant and letting x1 vary from a low value to a high value, or holding x1 constant and allowing x2 to vary from a low value to a high value. But you can get more information from a factorial design. In a factorial design matrix, at a low factor of x2, you have low and high levels of x1, giving you two data points to represent the low value of x2. Similarly, at the high value of x2, you have a low and high level of x1, and that also gives you two, two data points to represent the high value of x2. So you do the same thing for x1, creating at x1 a low and high value of x2, and at the condition of x2 being high, x1 being high, excuse me, you have a low and high value of x2. So you only have four runs in this design matrix, but you can see that these four re runs represent all the different combinations between x1 and x2. And that allows you to assess not only the main effects of x1 and x2 on the outcome, the, the, uh, the um, variable interest, but also allows you to assess the interactions between x1 and x2. Now again, this only occurs in four runs, whereas in an intuitive design you have six runs where you vary one at a time and you have less information. So that's what a factorial design is. So this is the, the why and the what. How do you go about analyzing this design? These images illustrate a two to the third factorial design with no replication. And essentially it's a, a linear model where the variables, the main effects are linearly related to the variable interest. And you can see in this image that you are averaging the, the uh, data points on the low value of A and the high value of A and creating a low and high value. In B, you're doing the same thing, low and high B. C, doing low and, and high values of C by averaging the four data points at those um, conditions represented by the plane uh, in this image. So mathematically, what you're doing is you're taking the difference between the response variable at high and low values of these three different main effects, A, B, and C. You can do the same thing for the interactions, and the interactions are represented by these planes. Um, so, so that's factorial designs in a nutshell. So in conclusion, what factorial designs are are really a set of screening designs when you have two to the k factors that you're trying to sort out and determine which ones are important in, a, in, in the parameter space. Notice this is just an analysis of variance, and you're looking for which factors contribute significantly to the response variable. This um, assumes a number of things, including linearity, randomness, and uh, normality in the data. And it works well for linear data, but when there's a variation uh, that's nonlinear, it can be masked.